So whenever you fill out a form on the internet, you probably fill it out with bogus addresses, you put fake addresses down, you put the wrong number down, and this is very common. And this is the reason that we have this thing called data validation. Data validation is going to make sure that the people who are filling out the forms, the people who are submitting data to your API are doing so in a correct format. And data validation comes in many forms, but I'm gonna just cover the first two most common forms. The first is going to be whenever you actually submit the URL, you can perform data validation in the form of URL constraints. We'll talk about this more right here in a second. The most common and the most robust is going to be data validation for your JSON. And what's going to happen is that whenever you submit a URL and whenever you submit an actual piece of JSON to a controller to .NET Core, what's going to happen is that this is going to be a string. And once it passes over here, it's going to rip off all of the numbers and all the things that are identifiers, turn them into integers, and this is almost a form of validation in itself because if you submit something that's not supposed to be an integer, it's going to give you an error. The second and by far the most common is whenever you're submitting JSON, it's going to turn it into a whole entire object. Like it's going to take a huge string just like this, a huge you know blob of JSON, and it's going to actually turn it into an object. And that's actually pretty amazing. But let's go into a little bit more depth. So simple types, whenever you submit the actual URL, whenever you submit an ID through the HTTP get annotation just like this, it's going to actually turn it into an int. And let's just say you did not submit a one or you submitted maybe a string right here. This is going to catch it. This is actually going to say this is not an int. This is actually a string. And this is for simple types. For complex types, as I mentioned before, you're going to submit a whole entire piece of JSON and we are going to put our data annotations within the actual DTO, but it's kind of complicated. So let's go ahead, let's jump over into VS Code and let's do some coding. Okay, so the first data validation that we are going to do is we're going to do URL constraints, sometimes called route constraints. And the first one is going to be an int. So we'll have an ID, we'll have an int. We'll have a stock ID and we'll have an int right here. Then we'll have an ID, gonna do an int. Let's see here, Excel moved it up, looking good. And the last ID is going to be an int and that's going to be on our delete. Once again, route constraints are very easy. So let's go to our stock and let's do the exact same thing. We're gonna go into here. And this is just a form of type checking that all this is going to do is make sure that it is an int when it's initially passed in. And if you do pass in a string, it's just going to give you a 404 error. So go here, gonna do int, do id is equal to int, and that looks good. So let's go ahead, let's test it to make sure we're gonna go dot net watch run okay so what i'm going to do is i am going to go into one of the comment ids and i'm just going to test it really quick i don't think we need to test all of them and another thing too is that you can't exactly test it right here so what you have to do is you have to have almost it's almost like a workaround so what i'm going to do is just copy and uh, paste this directly into the url and i'll just type in string and what's going to happen is that it's just going to say it can't be found. So that is uh, our that is a very simple form of data validation, and that's route constraints. Now we want to move on to com more complex forms of validation, but very simple. These are not very complicated forms of validation. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our DTOs, and we're going to make sure that we have uh, what are called data validation annotations. That's a very big word on top of our actual properties within our DTO. I would highly recommend never putting data validation directly in the model. If you put data validation directly in the model, it's going to apply it globally and you typically don't want that. So this is another reason that we create DTOs is so that we can add our uh, data validation in here. So I'm gonna go required and it's going to go ahead. It's going to bring it in um, through the component model data annotations namespace. And then we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go min length. 
And we just have to type out a couple of these. And after this, we can copy and paste the rest. Feel free to set these to whatever you like, but I'm going to make sure that it is a minimum length of five. And I'm going to say the error message is equal to, we'll say title must be five characters. Yep, I think that that is what we want. So title is five characters, just like this. Same thing, we're just going to go uh, down one more and we're going to make it max length. So we're, we're going to say max length is equal to 280. And I think I just typed in max characters for like a Twitter comment or something. And that's how I obtain these. So I'm going to go here. Title cannot be over. So we'll say title cannot be over. 280 characters. Characters. Just like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go over here and I'm going to copy and paste this down. There's no reason to type, go ahead and type all of this down and then just change this to content must be minimum five characters and let's see. Content must be over 280 characters. And then we can just do the same exact thing for the update. So we'll do update comment request ETO. And we can just copy and paste them uh, over. So first one, title, just go into here. We'll do the same exact thing. Why did it do that? So go over here. Go down. Say title. And we need to go ahead and bring this in. So control dot. Then we're going to do the same exact thing. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do all of our data annotations for the create stock request ETO. So we're going to go into here, create stock request. And we have the symbol company name purchased. We have the dividend and same thing as before. I'm going to say required. Go ahead, bring this in. Then we're going to go uh, max length. We'll say max length is equal to 10. And it's going to be error message. And because it's required, it's going to make sure that we only submit one. And I, um, I'm almost 100% positive that there are uh stock symbols with just one but there's not over 10 but i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on the 10 but i am like a po i am positive that there are one one letter uh stock symbols okay so we're gonna do the exact same thing with the company name and say company name cannot be over 10 characters and we'll do the purchase price so we're going to say we're going to make this required then we're going to give this a range and the range is going to be one to one trillion one, two, three, six. so one two three one two three there's a million two three and we'll just add one more on there just for good measure. All right, so last div, it's going to be in between 0 0.001 and 100. So we're going to go into here. And we're going to have a range of 0 0.001. Going to make it max 100, although I almost guarantee you Although I almost guarantee you that there's probably not a dividend that's going to be over a hundred. All right, so required. And we're gonna go into here. So max length is equal to 10 error message. It's equal to industry cannot be over 10. Okay, and then we're gonna have the market cap, and the market cap is gonna be one between one and five trillion. So 
range is equal to one. And we're going to say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Looking good. All right. Now we need to do the update stock and the update stock is going to be almost the exact same. So what I am going to do is bring this over here. And I'm going to say update stock request and just go over. So update stock request. Bring this over here. Bring this over here so that I can see it. And we'll just go ahead, copy and paste all of these over. So go here. I'm going to go paste that. Make sure to control dot. Then we're going to do company name. So go down here. Then we go purchase. I'm going to go last div. So go here. I'm going to go industry. So just go ahead, copy and paste that down there. Then market cap. So go ahead, copy and paste this. Looking good. So even though we have all of these data annotations inside of our DTOs, nothing is going to happen till we tell .NET to actually perform validation. And luckily for us, we have abstractions on top of abstractions. And all we have to do is add what's called model state. So model state, and watch what happens. All you need to do is add this and we could add more complex forms of validation, but this is a pretty simple API and you can get a lot done with model state. You could, like I said, there are more comp, you could do global state validation, but with just this, with just this two lines of code right here, we perform all of this validation. And all that's going to happen is that if our model is not right and we did not submit the right type of validation or let's just say we didn't add the type of symbol that we wanted or needed, it's going to spit out an error in the form of a model state error. Where does this model state even come from? Well, what, where it's coming from is it's inheriting from controller base. Controller base is giving us this object. And each time that this actual controller executes, it's going to give us a brand new model state object. And if our model state is not valid, it's going to trigger a bad requ request. So, and just watch how easily we can add model state to all of this right here. So we're gonna go model state right here. And technically we don't even really need a uh, model state for get all. We don't really need model state for get by ID, but I think it's good just to add it in case we add it later and we forget or we add some type of complex JSON or complex validation or simple validation later and we forget, it'll automatically be there. And it's just really easy to add. So I'm just gonna go through here and go ahead, add all these all the way down. So go to here, do the exact same thing. And all we have to do is copy and paste this into our controller as well too. So go here, go down. We're gonna do the get by ID, do post. And I'm gonna separate these apart. These look, this doesn't look, this is all jumbled together. I don't think it looks that great. Okay, so we're gonna do same exact thing. Go here and now we have delete and it's probably a good idea that we test all of the endpoints. This is probably going to take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to go through and test all of these to make sure that they're working. So I'm going to go into here, go ahead, just try it out. It's looking good. So we'll test four. We'll test to see if we get Apple back. Looking great. So we have, we'll do the comment ID and we're going to do, let's just say Apple and we'll just add Apple to we're going to add the apple to to uh to the title all right so all right i'm getting a little carried away here so apple to 
was the best computer. Oh my gosh. I'm having way too much fun. And we're looking good. Let's let's go ahead and make sure here. Apple II was the best computer. And let's go ahead and delete it. Comment does not exist. Or uh, it's actually number four. Okay, looking good. Okay, so let's go ahead down here. Let's go get a stock. Let's test our actual post. So we've got an ID 21. And we're going to go into here, add an extra title string content string to our actual uh, Tesla stock again. And everything's looking good to go. Next thing we want to do is we're going to test this. And we're going to just go down here and... Okay, yep, so the title field is required. And let's also do a put as well too. And let's just get a random comment. So we'll get five. We'll just try to edit number five. Go into here, so we'll say five. And go here, go here. Yep, looking good. So now we're going to do the stock. And I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this. So get stock. Looking good. We're going to go down here. We're going to do the post. So we're going to go ahead and try this out. String, string, string. And just going to fill this with bogus information. So make sure that all these are looking good. Okay, symbol field is required. Field last div. Looking great. And we're going to... Uh, make sure that our ID, so let's see, let's go ahead and test. We'll go, try, we'll get, we'll try to get 22, make sure that it works. Okay, working as expected. We'll try to edit Microsoft up here, so 22. Gonna try and do the exact same thing, just input bogus information. So zero. Looking good. Okay, then let's do the very last delete. So let's do the delete. We're going to go down and let's just delete 1018 because we don't want the straight one. So go 1018. And looking good. We now have success. Hope that you guys like this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.